Hello and welcome to the School of Stocks. I'm your host, Victor Dongo. Last time we spoke about um, discounting the future back to today in our series for valuation. We shall be taking a step further today by discussing how to get those future values. Those future values come through an understanding of the any power of that particular business. It is very important that you understand the earning power of that business for you to be able to estimate what it will bring in terms of owner's earning in future. What you are discounting from the future is the owner's earning. If you can do that, you can compare it to the total market capitalization or the share price of each unit. So um, without wasting much time, let's move on to understanding the earning power of the business. So you understand the various rates of return, particularly the return on invested capital. You understand how the company uses debt and how it uses equity financing. Then you understand how the company generates the revenue and what protects that revenue from assault if they have any structural competitive advantage. And then when you look at the revenue, you look at what's left in terms of net. Then you look at how the receivables are being managed, the payables are being managed, and you look at how uh, investments are being made and how the depreciation is being done. And you look at a whole lot of other factors in terms of the, the kind of management the company has and the line of business. If it is a business that is um, um, it has no barrier to entry, where people can actually just come and you know take your cookie away, those are the things that will actually help you to be able to estimate the future cash that you as the owner can get out of the business, which will then help you in your valuation process. So, um, let's say we have a business here that you call ABC Manufacturing. This ABC Manufacturing, we have done our due diligence. When I mean due diligence, we have understood the earning power. And then we are able to compute the owner's earning for the future. And it comes to this. For instance, um, this is year 2020, the current year, which is the year we are going to make our investment. So after that, we have the owner's earning as in year 2021, 10 million, 2022, 11 million, 2023, um, 13 million, 2024, 13 million, 2025, 15 million, and so on to 2030, and we have 19 million. This is our owner's earning. Remember, owner's earning is not dividends. Owner's earning is what is left after the owner has paid the suppliers, um, has paid his um, creditors, has paid his taxes, every other thing that is left um, after he has actually also deducted uh, the cost of um, share, um, issuing free shares to uh, members of staff and everything. This, what is left is what you call owner's earning. So this one, you also add back depreciation. So uh, that is not equal to uh, um, dividend. From owner's earnings, you get money for dividends, you get money for um, reinvestment beyond what um, we have depreciated. Um, we, it can sit in, in the balance sheet as cash. Um, it can also be used for share buyback. So these are ways you use owner's earnings. So that is what you are going to discount. So in the process of discounting, we look at, we get a discount rate, which normally is, for instance, why we use um, a 10 year note is because it's a long term, is a long term investment um, strategy. So we are looking as 
if we keep our money in the federal with the government for 10 years how much interest are we going to earn so that um, rate of return is what we then use as a discount for all this um, owners earning and to do that we use this formula so we take each of this owners earning and then use this discount rate uh, um, at the bottom, one plus the discount rate, when you change this from percentage, this actually becomes 0 0.01845. All together, you raise it to the, to the power of the years from now. So for instance, if you take um, 2023, 2023 is three years from now. So if you are using 13 million up here, it's going to be 13 million all divided by one plus this discount raise the all raised to the power of three because it's three years from now so when you get that you now you can now calculate the business worth of abc manufacturing so if we do that you're going to have 10 million divided by one plus 0 0.01845 raised to the power of one remember we are using one because it is one year from now. So, plus the owners earning which you're going to get in 2022, which is 11 million, all divided by 1.01845 raised to the power of two. So that is that. You keep going and going, and then you until you come to uh, year 2030, uh, where your owners earning is 19. So, which is going to be 19 divided by 1 plus 0 0.01845 raised to the power of 10. So, now, I have decided to stop here because you can actually keep going on and on and on. So, the more you go, then the likelihood of your error and then the bigger the discount factor becomes. So, uh, because the disc discount factor becomes very big, this value becomes smaller and smaller and smaller but i just decided let's stop here so now if you add up all this you have 128 million as the business abc manufacturing what so if you the meaning is that if you if were to buy all of abc right now what you will get in the next 10 years, if you discount it by the um, risk-free rate, that what you are going to get in the next 10 years is going to be 128 million. 128 million discount value. That is, that is what you are going to get. So whatever capital you lay out now, um, 128 28 million is what you are going to get. So now let's look at we have gotten this market capitalization and we have gotten this ABC business what then we now look at the market capitalization of ABC. So now we now jump into the um, market to find out what the total business is currently going for. So you then discover that look ABC um, market capitalization is 80 million actually and they're like wow this is interesting so how many number of shares does it presently have it has 10 million shares it means that the unit price of its share will become 80 million dollars divided by 10 million shares so which is going to give you eight dollar per share. So it means the share price currently is eight dollars per share. So you know the business worth of ABC manufacturing, but ABC manufacturing has a policy of always doing share buyback. So you then discover that over the years their outstanding shares is decreasing and decreasing and decreasing so 
It then means that in a in, in few years' time, at this rate, ABC manufacturing shares, say in another 10 years, could be roughly 7 million. So with that, you now say, okay, so all these monies which I'm going to get, all, all this money, which is the business worth right now, would in seven years be having to deal with only seven million um, shares. So if you then want to now say the business worth, that's so the worth per share will now be 128 million. divided by 7 million shares. So this is now going to give you $18 per share. So in essence, you have the share of ABC manufacturing what $8 currently, but in future, when you discount everything that you hope to get before you make the investment, you, you have actually calculated the worth to be $18 per share. So in essence, you are buying $18 of a share for $8. So it means that since the share price of $8 is less than the worth of the business at $18, it becomes no brainer to invest. Having understood the earning power of the manufacturing company. So what we are trying to say here is that this is giving you a margin of safety, margin of safety of roughly $18, dollars minus eight divided by that so which is going to give you 10 over eight which is roughly about 125 percent margin of safety so that is what you are getting 125 percent margin of safety is what you are getting so it means that if you make an, even an error, you have a cushion of 125% margin of safety. So that is basically how um, to calculate the, um, the present value of all your future owners earning to make the um, investment decision whether to buy or not what if i told you there is a faster way of doing this a way that will give you a chance to just by inspection be able to ca calculate all of this without much difference from that so what i'm trying to say is that a shorter way to arriving at a value close to 128 million. It could be 125, it could be 130 or thereabout, but not a big variation. Well, um, that is the one I often prefer because it's way faster. So our next lecture will be discussing the faster means of computing this valuation. Thank you for your time and have a lovely day. Bye.